we're on the cusp of an exciting clean energy, fairer, healthier world, which we should all be immensely excited about and looking forward to. And yet at the same time, we are heading for a world of warming of at best 2.4 degrees above, uh, Celsius above pre-industrial levels. And the scientists, the IPCC, which is very well represented here, has warned us that the whole world should stay at not above 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial standards. And I say, at best, we are heading for a 2.4 degree world, because that's if, according to Climate Action Tracker, if all governments and corporations and investment fulfilled the prejudice and prom promises that they have made. And actually, they're not doing that fully. So we're probably heading more for a 2.7 degree or maybe even 3 degrees Celsius world above pre-industrial standards. And, and that's ca catastrophic. So we're on the cusp of a clean energy world. And we're heading for disaster. And yet we don't talk about it. We don't share this sense of a climate and biodiversity crisis, which is increasingly unfolding in our world. We're full of short-term preoccupations, particularly at the political level, particularly in democratic countries. Politicians have to win elections, so they are very concerned about making sure that they do so in, in, in ways that uh, make sense to them in the short term. And yet, we have this very strange paradox. I think part of the problem is a problem of communication, that we don't read about this enough in the media. We don't hear about it enough um, in our uh, everyday lives. And what we need, I believe, is to have an approach to the climate and biodiversity crisis, which is much more people-centered, and which takes the position that uh, we have to realize all the positive work that is going on and make it more visible. Make it more visible so that it connects more and that we have more systems change. Um, I'm very pleased that you have a Center for Sustainable Systems. I was speaking to the Dean of the Center earlier and saying I'm very much a systems change person and I'm going to be emphasizing that. But we also have to, I believe, take into account the injustices of climate change. This was brought home to me after I had served as High Commissioner for Human Rights, and not made fully the connection between climate change and human rights. Um, I was aware increasingly in my work as High Commissioner of the gravity of the climate uh, crisis, but another part of the UN was dealing with it. And I was in my silo, a large silo of concern for human rights and gender equality and the rights of people with disabilities, the rights of indigenous peoples, etc. And it was afterwards when I started a small organization, a small NGO called Realizing Rights, which was a sort of play on the word realizing, um, that everybody in the world should realize they have human rights. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights had made that clear in 1948. Um, and those with power should realize and implement those rights. 